So we'll start at 2.5. Okay. So let me give a data graph session link. I just ping that uh, data graph uh, link, you know, in chat box. You know. If anyone is interested, you know, they can use that link basically. So I'm sharing my screen. Just let me say uh, uh, yes or no if you can see my screen. OK. So guys, I'm, I'm starting with the session. So, okay. so, so like uh, this is our 19th uh, Surat MuleSoft meetup. And in this meetup, we are going to discuss about identity and the client management with the MuleSoft. So basically, how you can enable uh, identity management on any point platform and how you can enable a dynamic client registration on any point platform. So basically, we will going to see some demonstration. So one demo, like one demonstration is on SAML 2.0, one demonstration will be on OpenID Connect and one demonstration will be on dynamic client registration. So I just uh, myself, uh, Jitendra Bafna, and working as a senior solution architect for Capgemini. And currently, I'm a Surat and the Nasik MuleSoft Meetup leader and also MuleSoft ambassador. And I have overall 13 years of experience in the integration and the API technology. I'm certified MuleSoft integration and the platform architect. I think Nitis is not available today. So yeah, so he's a he's the co-leader for Surat MuleSoft Meetup. You know, then again, I will be the speaker for today's meetup. So agenda, we will going through what are the different API securities, uh, vulnerabilities, threats, you know, how can we enable uh, identity management using SAML and the open ID connect, then how we can enable the client management using dynamic client registration, then we will have a live demonstration, then we will finally we will have a quiz. Okay, so let me check. Uh, okay. Any question? Okay, so I can quickly move to presentation. What is API security? So basically, API security is an essential element of application, especially in regards of API where you have a hundred or thousand of calls on daily basis. So basically, every day there are new threats, new vulnerabilities are created in such a way it is very important to secure the API. So basically, what is happening? Like, you know, API security is the must. Like for organization to be the API organization, to be the successful API organization, the security is the main aspect. Like the security needs to be taken care of at each and every layer. So basically, you have to ensure that your API is secure at a network layer, your API is secure at a transit layer, your API is secure at a REST layer. Basically, you have to ensure that your API is secure in transit as well as the API is secure in the REST. If you see, there are n number of threads or n number of vulnerabilities are developed every day, right? And like, so to to make your organization API successful organization, so you have to consider security at each and every level or each each and every layer basically. Okay, so MuleSoft provided like a lot of components, a lot of techniques through which you can minimize the API threats. You can minimize the API vulnerabilities. So basically, if you see MuleSoft provide a product called API Manager. So API Manager itself comes comes with a many API policies, many API security policies, right? to ignore any kind of attack, to avoid any kind of security attacks or vulnerabilities, right? So we have uh, different kinds of attacks, which is denial of service, distributed denial of service. So there are many kinds of like uh, attacks is available and we will see how we can minimize those attacks, okay? So if you see in MuleSoft, you have a, something called API manager. So where like you can apply the policies to API to, to enable the authentication and the authorization for your APIs basically, right? Apart from that, you can enable SSL for your APIs to secure the API at a transport layer. 
then you can also secure your APIs at a network layer, like by enabling the endpoint VPC, dedicated load balancer, like by applying the IP whitelisting, IP blacklisting kind of policies. So those kind of things are available with the mule shop basically. Okay. Let me go to the different uh, slide. So we have something called diff different type of API attacks. So basically we have a denial of service. We have a distributed denial of service. We have a parameter tampering. We have a course. We have a in injection attacks. We have a sensitive data exposure. So, so there are n number of like attacks or n number of security threats is available. So one of the one of the most important security threat is denial of service. So basically in denial of service, what happens? You have a APIs and somebody try to send n number of requests and your API will not handle those those number of requests at a time. End up in your system crash or system shutdown, right? So it, it means like API will be not available to end client basically. So that is the one kind of attack. So distributed denial of service, it is also a part of denial of service attack. In distributed denial of service, there are multiple like multiple programmers or multiple like attackers like are sending the request to the same API. Request to say API which will make your all your server resources and server will be not able to process any other further request and your server will shut down or it will or your mule runtime will get crashed. So, so those kind of attack is known as denial of service, distributed denial of service. We have sensitive data exposure. So basically, if you see in your request, you may have some sensitive data amount, your salary, your social security number. So how can we ensure that those data, you know, like uh, confi those confidence data is encrypted? Uh, okay. So in that case, MuleSwap provide a cryptography module, which comes comes with a lot of algorithm like Java cryptography extension, like pro PGP algorithm. It comes with XML uh, encryption. So those kind of things is available. For is nothing like it's cross site scripting basically okay somebody try to uh, like uh, from other region try to send some run try to run some program which will like consume all the resources of your server right so in that case you have a course policy so you can ensure that you are getting the request from right origin not from the wrong like you know so you can so those kind of things can be taken care of Policy which is available with the MuleSwap. How to achieve the API security? So MuleSwap provide like for data security, provide digital signature. You can sign the message and you can send to the end user basically. So end user can validate the signature and it can ensure that the request is coming from the right client or something like that. Then we have a cryptography module. Then we have a lot of authentication policies like JWTO or the token based authentication. Then we have an API manager policy where you can like, you know, you can avoid the denial of service or distributed denial of service attack using rate limiting policy, XML threat protection policy, JWT validation policy, right? So also uh, like MuleSoft also provide the component any point security and web application firewall in case of runtime fabric. Then we have a something like identity management and the client management. We will focus on these two part identity management and the client management. Okay. So let me uh, see like how many OAuth providers. So MuleSoft support almost all the OAuth provider. So we have uh, some few are like most famous OAuth provider, Okta, Ping, OpenEM, Keyclock, AWS Cognito, Azure IDP, OAuth Zero, Google Box, GitHub. And also MuleSoft supports some kind of grant types. So grant type, it's a way of like authenticating or way of authorizing the user. So it's, it's authorization code, client credential, refresh token, password, and the implicit code. So these are the different OAuth provider is available, you know, oh, sorry, grant type is available, you know, with OAuth basically. Any question? Let me check. Yes, Ajay, you are correct. So basically identity management is used to govern your AnyPoint platform to like to ensure that the, like to authenticate the user. So apart from that, like client management is basically is used to secure your api to enable the authentication or authorization on the top of your apis basically so that is the di difference so identity management identity management you are right it is used to log into the anypoint platform using your uh, username and the password which is available in on on third party a third party source basically okay whereas client management is used to secure your apis basically any question is this clear ajay
Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Raghuram, like there, there, there are some uh, there are some kind of like you can apply the definitely you can apply the WAP on the front of uh, load balancer, basically DLB, uh, which can secure your cloud up. But also there are like uh, DLB also come up with something called whitelisted C ideas, basically, right? So there is an option when you are creating the dedicated load balancer, you have something called whitelisted CIDRs where like uh, you can whitelist it only like like if you want to allow the traffic from some of the like some of the sources right so where you can whitelist those cids so it will ensure that the traffic is coming from like you know like trusted ip addresses not from the untrusted ip address those kind of things can be also done okay yeah let me go back to next slide So let understand like what is I talk about like we have some grant type. So let understand what is authorization code grant type. So basically in authorization code grant type, what happened? The client will have a client ID and the client secret. We have to generate a client ID and the client secret. In this mechanism, we will use Okta as our OAuth provider. So for in Okta, we will generate client ID and the client secret, and we will share those client ID and the client secret to the client basically. So now the client has to access some resources, has to call some APIs, right? Uh, has to call the APIs which is deployed in on the MuleSoft runtime manager. Okay, so in that case, MuleSoft uh, any point platform will be the resource server. Okay, so what will happen? The first step, the client will send a client ID and the other parameters like uh, callback URL, like you know, so those kind of things the client will send to the authorization server which is uh, located in you know, on the Okta. The authorize authorization server will validate that client ID and other parameter. If everything is fine, the authorization server will redirect to the resource owner where it will prompt for it will prompt a screen where the client has to put username and the password basically. So resource owner will validate those username and the password which has been like entered by a client. Okay, once the it has been like resource owner validated, it will say it will send the response back to authorization server saying authenticated and the user is consent. This is right user. Now the authorization server will send authorization code to the client. Basically, it will generate an authorization code and it will send to the client. Okay, so here this completed. Now the client has to generate a bearer token. So now client will send client ID, client secret, the authorization code which comes uh, in the first step, and the other parameter on the token URL to the authorization server. Okay, now authorization server will validate all these parameter and send back a JWT token. Okay. So now this whole step has to be done, has to be, has to be taken care by uh, any API consumer. Okay. Now the client will send the request to the resource server. So now the client will send like uh, the request to the resource server. So to the MuleSoft, uh, like to the, it will call MuleSoft API. So, it, and it will also send a JWT token in the authorization header. The request will come to MuleSoft and we have applied a JWT validation policy in API manager. So in that JWT validation policy, we will give a JWT token validation URL. So when the request will come to resource server, resource server will share, will validate that token using uh, using that JWT token validation URL. Once the token is validated, the, it will give the response. The token has been validated successfully. Now resource server will send the response back to the client with all the required JSON messages or XML messages, whatever like it will send back. Any question on this on authorization support? Yes, Rajiv. Yeah, so uh, Jitana, my question was like, you know, in the Mule 4.3, yeah, you know, it handles the back pressure, right? So if you have multiple requests coming in and the system mm. are able to cope up with those requests, then, you know, it doesn't uh, blow up, but rather it, you know, sends back the pressure and then, you know, it doesn't uh, even accept the new request. Yeah, that, that is true. Okay, but still, like uh, 
we we need to attack we we need to attack that back back pressure kind of thing also so basically it is recommended like for system api right so mm -hmm. it is recommended we should apply policy like spike control or rate limiting those kind of policy needs to be applied so there might be like uh, there, there is a question called like when like uh, you have a system api which is not able to accept to so many requests right so in that case how we how we can secure that so basically you can apply the rate limiting or spike control kind of policy okay so you mean in 4.3 and above also we need to apply this uh, yeah you need to apply you know you you, you cannot uh, like make your server busy like there might see there might be some chances like you are, you are saying you are saying right it break pressure is there but in in case there might be chances the server may get restarted also if too many requests is coming okay thank you Okay, another question on authorization. So, uh, can you just move to the uh, diagram, please? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm I'm taking one Gyanendra Tiwari question. When yeah. we do the connection via using authorization, we have to call local. Yes, Gyanendra, that is known as you have to enable the O or dance basically. Okay, that is the different thing. Here, what we're doing here, we are securing our Microsoft API in Salesforce. You are using the Salesforce connector. and you are like using the salesforce connector and you are trying to connect the salesforce right in this case mulesoft is a client and mulesoft is trying to connect the salesforce using salesforce connector so in that case whenever first time you are configuring your salesforce connector with oauth 2.0 you need to first time you need to enable the oauth dance which is the url called local host 88 that, that depend what kind of url you have configured so first time you have to enable the look like oauth dance where you have to put it will like it will it will show the salesforce screen and you can put the salesforce username and the password once the over dance started you don't have to do every time yeah and okay so authorization code it's nothing it contains some guid yes yeah and you don't have to do every time it's for one time first time then you deploy an application after deployment you have to do the over dance at least one one time not every time okay so what author it it contain a key uh, it kind of g u i d basically okay so it's it's kind of like a string like it it's just a string of 30 or 40 character dict okay it i will show that i will show that okay so it's just kind of a string basically yeah uh, rajiv you are asking some question now yeah <clears throat> so jitendra can you just uh, bring up the diagram please on the screen yeah i will okay so uh, what we say is uh, at the end you know uh, it's jwt token validation you know who validates the uh, jwt token sent from the client right so my question okay. is how uh, this uh, jwt token validation service knows that which token is been generated you know because the uh, no no it's not like that okay generally what happens so uh, it's not like that so generally in jwd token there is certificates like there is some kind of public key and a private key okay so mm -hmm. like they, they like when when you like try to browse that jwd token right with jwd token jwks url we call that url as a jwks url okay so if you browse that url you will see the private key and public key so they they using some rsa 256 algorithm to do some calculation basically right so like it try to i don't know what happened in the background okay So generally, it do some calculation and it try to match that token basically. Ah, okay, okay. <clears throat> Maybe the key so is generally it it is it is not going and hitting the server. So it, when you browse the JWT URI, right, it contain one one private key and one public key. So whatever token we are sending, right, so they will use that private key and public key to encrypt or decrypt that token. Okay. So okay. using that, they will try to validate like if token match like in that they use some they use some time. uh below that like some do the some time calculation using the private key and public key mm -hmm. uh, okay i got it like you know maybe the keys are getting matched you know uh yeah public key to private key yes okay correct okay. thank you now now the second type is implicit code okay so the second algorithm the second grant type is implicit code so in implicit code what happens basically uh so if you see the first step is same the client will send client id and other parameter to authorization server authorization server will validate the client id and other parameters if everything is fine it will send it will redirect the request to resource owner resource owner will show the screen where you have to put a username and the password if username and the password is correct it will say authenticated and consent in this case 
authorization server will directly send the token to the client here it doesn't sending the auth code basically it directly sending the token now the client can use the token directly in the authorization header and they say send the request to the resource server resource server will validate the token using jwt url token is successfully validated and resource server send the response back to the client here it's bit insecure right here just it giving the token in the first step itself and this particular steps like if you see authorization code there's extra steps to get the token but in case of uh, implicit code uh, it's giving the token at the first step only you don't have to call the token url it's giving the token on the authorized authorized url itself right the third is coming a client credential in client credential there is a no resource owner okay there is a no resource owner the client will send a client id client secret to authorization server on directly on token url the authorization server will validate everything okay and send jwt token back to the client okay and in this case now client can use that token in authorization header and send to the resource server and now resource server will say a validate token using that jwk url token is successfully validated and the resource server will send back the response to the client okay any question so there are three types basically jitendra in the third type uh, if the jwt token is somehow compromised right then uh, then the uh, resource owner doesn't get to know like you know uh, who is the um, requester so maybe in that uh, case, you know, the client uh, machine if that is not secure then you know somebody else can intruder can you know just uh, get hold of this uh, jwt token and then you know that request can be sent to the server so yeah. so implicit code and this client credential is bit insecure as compared to authorization code basically yeah yeah in authorization code you 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 know like you know who is the requester and requester is also authentic and you you have you get validated at multiple places first client id validated right then your username pass get validated on third step the client id and the client secret both get validated mm -hmm. right right yeah. so now we will talk about the identity management basically so what is identity management so basically so currently what we do in, on any point platform we go and create a username and the password to give the access to anyone but the but my organization has already have a database or already have a azure directory where all username and a password exist and they should by default get the access to any point platform so if i have a 20000 employee or 20000 users i cannot go and create 20000 users in the any point platform right so that is not a good approach it will take a lot of times and lot of thing is there and there is there is any way that he, I can integrate my any point platform with like with the with the destination or with the source where all my user exists, right? So in that scenario, the identity management comes into the picture. So the one of the technique is SAML basically. You can use the SAML or you can use the Open ID Connect. So Open ID Connect is the latest uh, technology which is developed on the top of OAuth. So first we'll talk about the SAML. The SAML is basically nothing a security assertion markup language. And it is mainly designed to authenticate the users and to provide the identity data for access control and the communication method for user identity. So basically, it is used to like authenticate the user and provide the access to required component in the AnyPoint platform. I will talk about the AnyPoint platform. Okay. So required components uh, access to the AnyPoint platform. So SAML basically communicate in the XML base basically. If you so there is a communication between a service provider and the identity provider provider in the form of XML basically. So in this case, my identity provider will be Okta, okay, and my service provider will be MuleSoft or any point platform. So identity provider is basically perform the authentication and transport the user identity to the service provider, right? So basically, in this case, Okta will authenticate the user and it will say this user is right, this user exists in my directory, and it will transfer the user identity to the service provider. And the service provider one who trusts the identity provider and authorize user to access the requested resources. So once the identity provider like uh, authenticate the user, the service provider know what kind of access needs to be provided to this particular user. So those kind of mapping has been done with the service provider. Okay. So that is the SAML identity. We will talk more about that. In SAML, like. Uh, the the user is like requested for protected resources to service provider this is nothing this is any point platform 
okay now service provider will like you know redirect user to the saml id idb in this case this is okta okta will display a log on screen the credential will get validated in their backend system and it will send the like verification response back to the saml idp and now saml idp send the response back to the service provider and now service provider will give the access to the user basically so that is how this identity management works so let me show the demo on that any question before that so i will show one demo right so this demo will be very useful yeah anything jitendra i was saying that you know this is basically a single sign on uh, yeah example, right yeah it's single sign on see like if you if you are enterprise level organization you have uh, 100000 users right and you want like those 100000 users can can access any point exchange they can go and see what are the different assets available in my organization right so you cannot go and create 100000 users in the any point platform it will take a lot of time and it will like so it's there there it, is there any way like uh, how i can like bring all those users on like any point platform so you can use that identity management in between identity management so basically so you can use the idp which can connect your directory so and like which can be used to authenticate the user to any point platform right it's kind of middleware between your uh, uh, da, your active your directory active directory and your any point platform basically got it so jitend out of curiosity so for example uh, you have active directory and as you said 100000 users mm. and you know uh, so uh, those are authenticated based on your active directory so correct but within active directory i have got different levels of uh, uh, resources right yeah i, I got your question what we, and, what, and different level require different kind of authentication right. different kind of accesses right yes. so yes. so there there is a thing available with that also okay i will show that so that is in demo i will oh, show that okay thank you okay the first demo we will going to so see on saml how we can enable a saml basically the first thing what i will do i will go to my okta so you can create a free dev account on okta so basically uh, it provide a, at least you can create up to five application so i am saying application okay in application i can say a create application integration and i will say saml 2.0 you have to provide app name so i can say any point mulesoft demo app okay simple next you have to provide a single sign on url okay and entity and audience uri okay so so by default there is a single sign on uri this is the single sign on uri basically you can this is the default uri you can use that okay then also you have to provide the audience uri so audience uri is nothing like you know let let me close this audience uri is nothing it's a organization id of your any point platform dot any point dot mule shop com so you can find that organization id you can go to organization here right and you can get this id okay you can copy this id and you can say any point dot mule shop dot com and copy this okay i will keep everything as uh, as it is i will not do anything here next uh, i am okta customer you, it that doesn't matter this is for okay so i can say finish okay once you say finish you can click on this view setup instruction okay now i go to any point platform you go to identity provider you can say identity provider i want saml 2.0 
okay and like uh, here you have to provide a single sign on uri okay a single sign on url so from where you can find it so i put a view instruction you can put a single sign on url okay you can go there and you can just paste it here the sign off url you can provide for anything i will provide this so basically after sign off where you have to go you can provide that url and issuer url so you can go to here and you can get the issuer url and you have to provide a certificate again you go to view instruction you can copy this certificate and you have to provide the audience url the same url right this the organization id dot any point dot mule shop dot com you provide the same url and i will say create okay i've created it so now what i will do i will open a different browser i can open is copy this file before that i have to do one thing uh, i have to go to application okay and i will just say assign to group i will say every assign i clicked it just a minute I can say assign to group. Okay. So let me open the browser. I can then I can say enter. Okay. So it it prompt me to put the username and the password. I'll put my octa username and password. Yeah, Simon Assassin doesn't contain email email attribute. Okay, let me check. Yeah, I forget to do something. So what you have to do? Okay, uh, uh, sorry for that. Like you, I forget to miss. I have missed one configuration. So that's fine. Like we will. What we will do? We, so that is very important configuration. Why it's got? Uh, why we got added out? Because so basically. We need to send some information to any point platform like email ID, username, first name, last name, those kind of things. So I will go there. Okay, you can go to general. I will edit this. Okay, edit. No, I want to edit this. I think. I can go next. Okay, you have to send this attribute basically the attribute statement. The first attribute I want to say a first name. Okay, so you can read it like this: user dot first name. And I also want to send last name. I can say user dot last name. I think. It should be like this. Okay. Then I can say email. And I can say tap user dot email. Okay. So these are the parameters I will edit. I will say next. Finish. Okay. Let me do it again. Okay, it was just a minute. Let me copy that URL octa sample. So now you, it it take me to the home basically. Right? So I am able to log in using my octa. Let me go to runtime manager. So it should give me a permission denied access, but my requirements like Rajiv asked me like uh, I want to give some default access, right? So my requirement is that I have a group and that group should get at least runtime manager access, right? If you see, it doesn't have runtime manager access, it doesn't have API manager access, like 
not, nothing is available right to that particular user right so there is a no access the person is able to log in into my any point platform but i can say there is a no access available to that particular user so how can i enable that it's very simple so you can go to first octa in octa see what happens if you see like you if you see azure directory there might be group and each group contains some list of users right so group uh, like uh, as as as, as Raji mentioned like one group people can have access to runtime manager one group people can have access to like uh, api manager one group of user can access to any point exchange so basically in octa we have some kind of facilities similar kind of facility so i have already created one group one which is mapped with one user you can add multiple users so currently i map the jitendra whatever like you know that user now what i have to do i have to go to i have already created the user i map only one user because i have only one user on, uh, within my organization so i can go to application under application let me go to applications rajiv is right that's what i yeah yeah so one user must have access to runtime manager so that is my requirement right now okay so what i will do i will edit this you have to edit this okay so you can say next or i will say group attribute keep this word in mind this spelling group okay so keep this group word in mind the name this name is very important and i can say regex and i want to allow all the group so i can say dot star currently i am saying all the groups basically okay so so currently i am saying all the groups so basically group uh, like dot start so it, otherwise i can say something like that equals to like group one something like that okay but uh, currently i am saying match reg regular expression which means all the groups okay and this group now see next okay say finish so now i can go to any point platform you can edit this and I mentioned just remember the name of that group. So I given name is group only, right? Thus you have to map that and just say save. Now you have to just just refresh this and go to roles. You have to do some mapping there. So if if you want to assign some roles to group one, how can we do that? You can go to roles. So let, let me check. I want to give a cloud of admin access, right? So currently it already have a group. I will remove this and I will say group one. I want to give group one access. And if the user is, if user in group one in Okta should have a default access to runtime manager. So I'm doing the edit external mapping. I'm saying update. So now if you open this, you will have a group one update. Okay. So this group one is mapped with now a cloud of production admin user basically. Okay. So this is what we have to do. Let me uh, close this. Let me copy this URL again. View instruction. Page. Okay, let me log in. So now let me check if I have access to my API manager, runtime manager or not. Yeah, I got the access now. You can see that. So if any user is part of group one, whenever it will log in for the first time, he will he by default, he will get the access to the cloud of as a admin user. Okay. In this way, you can do like, you know, in, in this way, you can do the roles thing with a, a particular group, basically. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Any question? Let me check if there's any question.
did the log on page like it nothing which log on page you are talking about page set up in saml identity can you just uh, be specific question like what like which log on page you are so log on is nothing like the url which we used to log in into any point platform basically that is the log on okay so what i will do i will just uh, remove this uh, identity provider now so i hope everybody understand how to set up the saml right it's very important like you know so this requirements comes most of the time like we have to set up the saml and by default like some group of user must get like group one have access to this users this roles like group two must have access to this role so this requirement definitely comes right when you are setting up the xml at the organization level any question oh good so let me close this let me close this also let me uh, remove this and okay so i have removed this right now so like uh, sample is removed now we will go to next next thing so now we have seen saml so there is also recently uh, come up a new protocol which is open id connect which can be also used to enable the identity management basically okay so the open id connection that is the extension of your oauth so basically initially the oauth is used to authorize your api now it can be used for authentication purpose also so it extend the oauth to enable the authentication so oauth protocol provide the api security via scope access token and open id connect provide the user authentication and the single sign on facility okay so as a any point platform organization like organization administrator you can configure the identity management in any point platform to set up users for a single sign on so like uh, we already seen there are two way one is open id connect and one is saml point saml 2.0 so we have already seen how we can use the saml 2.0 to set up uh, on id like to set up as an identity provider for the mule shop and now we will going to see how we can set up a open id connect in any point platform to uh, to enable the identity management okay so basically like uh, the saml like uh, saml like, they both use so open id used for authenticating the user okay they both are used to authenticate the user and provide the identity data for access control and the communication method for the user identity but the saml is most widely used uh, in the enterprise and the government application it is one of the mature uh, protocol basically and it is like running from 2005 basically and also it provides some wide range of identity functionality like we have seen that the like, like grouping uh, grouping of roles and mapping of roles those kind of thing is available okay and the saml use Uh, like xml format to communicate between service provider and the identity provider the open id connect is still a uh, new like uh, like it is mostly developed for web application the mobile application okay so like it is just the extension of oauth basically it use like uh, same mechanism as a oauth but the purpose for like identity uh, open id connect is use is used to you know connect or is is used for authentication basically and it use the jwt like json format for communication basically and simple https flows for the transport so that's a difference so i already shown you that how the authorization code works basically so let me uh, let me go and show how to enable the identity management the first thing again we will go to application okay i will create a new app app, app integration and i will use the open id connect this time okay and i will use the wave application and i can say next okay so i can say any point hidden tt management and you can use authorization code or like that's fine so you can keep this you uh, doesn't matter like we will not going to use this url for now 
So I can I, you can keep anything. So I can even keep the slash callback. We will not going to use this. So but we have to provide this URL. Sign out URL will don't require. So allow everyone in the organization to access. Okay, I can save. So I can copy this uh, client ID and the client secret. I will be requiring this. Okay. And I'll copy this client secret also. So apart, like we have to do this much, I mean much of the thing. Okay, I've set up the application. The next thing, what we have to do. We have to assign the group to this also identity management i can say assign to group for now i will say okay i think everyone is already i have assigned that so yeah everyone is already assigned yeah so everyone is assigned it means like no need to assign the different group i have assigned to everyone so that's the thing now i will go to identity management this time i will use the open id connect okay I will say use manual registration. You have to provide a client ID and client secret, which we have generated just now. Okay, and I will provide a client secret. So redirect URL. I need to change this on Okta. So copy this URL, and I mentioned like initially you can give anything, but at the end you need to change this. go to you can go to edit yeah edit here and give this as a, your callback url okay so this is your re, redirect uh, url basically you can save it so now in octa you have to provide this issuer url authorized url from where you can get it so you have to go to octa authorization server so for that for that i will go to this api Okay, you can. This is your default authorization server. You can click it here. Then, like, uh, you can click on this metadata URI and you can get a uh, issuer URI. Okay. Authorized URL. Then you have to find the authorized URL. And you have to give a token URL is already there. You can copy from the metadata, then user info URL. So for user info, what you have to copy this. So by default, that URL is not available. So you can say user info. Okay, these are the settings you need to do. So you have to provide all this information and you just say create. Okay, so now what I will do, I will say edit. And I can copy this URI. Okay, I will go to, I will close this browser and I have to open the A's again. And I can use this URI. So this URI redirect me to the Okta and I can give the Okta username and I can give the password also. Yeah, the user, I have some problem with this, so that's fine. Like, you, know, you will not face this issue. I have some problem with this. So what I have to do, I have to enable the user. Okay. So by default, this, uh, I don't know what is problem with, with my any point platform. So, but you will not face that issue. Don't worry about that. So I have enabled the user. So it, it, we are able to log in into your any point exchange. Okay. So that, that is, you can use the open ID connect also uh, for, you know, enabling like, or to log in into your any point platform. Okay. So any question? 
no no like sri rala i don't think we can see the xml response from octa like you know we cannot see that okay. any question uh, on this hello hello which one is more reliable i mean uh, is it uh, saml sir you go saml is more like you know saml you should go with saml most of the time okay like it, it depend on requirement like what for what purpose you are using like if you if you have some mobile application or web application has to log in uh, to want to log in into any one platform right but it will never happen right for like for logging into your any point platform i mean most of the people use saml at in enterprise what i have seen most of the people use the saml basically Okay. <clears throat> Any question? Now we will talk about a dynamic client registration. So, so basically, a dynamic client registration allow you allow you to third party. You know, so the third part. If you third party want to register. right they can register the dynamically using the dynamic client registration basically okay and this feature is also based on open id connect basically so we will see that like uh, like any like in in banking what happens like uh, any third party want to access the banking api and they want to register themselves right so they can use this particular feature a dynamic client registration where they can go and register like dynamically so they don't have to connect the bank and all those thing for registration purpose they can do it themselves basically okay so dynamic client registration is a protocol that allow oauth client application register with an oauth server basically okay so we will see that we will see that what we can do so let me show that so let me show first thing i have a like let me disable this identity provider first so this is fine so let me go to my runtime manager and let me show one application i copy this url basically i want to secure this api with open id connect right now this api is not secure right so i am getting the response uh, without any kind of security so how can i secure this api okay the first thing what we have to go uh, like but i want to enable this security at a like organization level how can i do that so there is a concept called dynamic client registration okay you can make use of that so what i can do and go into access management this time i will go to a client provider okay in client provider i have already have something right let me remove this first in client provider you have multiple option but i will use the open id dynamic client registration Wait. Okay, I will use Open ID Connect. Okay, I will give uh, some name, Mule BCR. Then you have to provide issuer URL. Like you have to provide client registration URL. You have to provide authorization header. 
so from where you can get it so we have have a metadata urls right so we have gone to authorization server metadata url so we can copy all this thing so i'm saying issuer we have to provide a client url so you can go to that particular thing again and go to client uh, this is the client uri a registration uri basically you can copy this and paste it here you have to provide authorization header so what we will do we will go back to okta and i will go to application okay i will create one more application i will use open id only i will use web application next here i can use a mule dcr authorization code okay and i can give any callback url here for now so you can give any callback url i i don't want single sign whatever you can leave it allow everyone save it will generate a client id and the client secret copy that client id and go to any point platform paste it client id then copy the client secret paste it here okay. a client secret now the next thing i also require authorization header so always you put sws space so and you can go to uh, like uh, security See, under security you can go to api this is my authorization server under api you can go to tokens and you can say create token i will say mule token create token to get this token copy this okay go to any point platform say sw space and paste this token okay so now you have to provide few more url that is authorized url token url and introspection url so we require authorized url right for generating the auth code so this is my authorization url i have shown that authorization code flow right we paste it here we can go to token url we can go to in in protection url where is it is this is the settings you need to do and simply say create this is created now you have to go to environments you have to assign this to the particular environment now this is the newly added thing so go to production and you can assign the client provider i want mule dcr okay and you can say update okay uh, i have to remove the external group mapping with one of the i think uh, done it with here not this one it checks everything because the identity provider is not configured and i have done the external mapping right which is wrong it's the cloud uh, admin i think mm -hmm. let me check now Which one is it? This is the error environment level. Let me check. Yeah, 
what I can do. Just give me a second. Which roles? Let me check where external mapping is done. I will delete this rule better. Let me check now. Yeah, so I this is what updated now. So I assign that. Now I can go to my API manager. The problem is that like uh, when you are deleting the identity provider, you have to re remove the external mapping rules also. So I forget to do that. Okay, so that's why I have to delete that rule. So I can go to this API. After going to this API, you have to like uh, assign the client provider. I will say mule DCR. Okay, you have to save it. Okay, so now if you go to policies. You can go to apply new policy. So by default, you cannot see open ID access enforcement policy. Once you apply that, uh, like, uh, let me check. Yeah, now we can see it. Once you apply the dynamic client registration, then only you can see it. Okay. I can apply this. Okay, and like you can like if you want to like uh, use any specific scopes, right? Like open ID or you, like, like you can keep it, you can restrict it here. But I will use all the scope for now, so I will not mention anything. And I can say like skip client ID validation. I can say apply. Okay. So let's wait while policy is getting applied. So I can go to my any point exchange. So in this case, what? Let me do one thing. Let me go back to application. The application which I don't require. This I don't require. Yes, deactivate it. This I don't require. Deactivate it. Okay. So let me go to any point exchange, and this is my API. Okay, I can say request access. So here I can create a pro instance, like you know, and then I can say create new application. I can say mule surat uh, demo. Okay. Here I can give a URL. So you have to give a callback URL, like you know, the you have to select the authorization code. What kind of grant type it should support? I I will say authorization code. And you have to provide the OAuth redirect URL. So I will use the Postman for testing purpose, right? So I can provide a Postman redirect URL. So I can say OAuth 2.0. So here, you, if you configure the like token, you will get that Postman callback URL. This is my Postman callback URL. So you, in your case, you need to provide your application callback URL. I can say create. I can say request access. Yeah. So if you see, I got a client ID and the client secret. Let me copy this. It's gone. That's fine. If you refresh it here, you will get this here. You know, 
so it got registered here also in this uh, in see this got registered here also right you can see that and even like it will get registered in any point platform in octa also let me copy this this is my client secret so that is what dy dynamic client registration basically you can register your client ID in the client secret in the octa enabling by dynamic okay so let me check my api now i will send the request i got 404 bad request why it should give some body access token not providing right so for that what i will do so see all, all url you can copy from the metadata right so this is the metadata urls so author you will get everything so what you require you require callback url by default you require auth url so i have already given the auth url i given the token url i want a client id and client secret which we have generated just now i can copy this then i want a client secret get an state and like you can say get new access token so it will ask me for username and password i think octa username and password so that is the resource owner now. The request has been redirected to the resource owner. Okay. okay let me check. Could not complete the. Let me check. Let me check if my token client secret open ID or I can say mule. Oh. Authentication failed. If my client ID and client secret is right, token is right. This is right. Let me, I know what is the problem. Okay. So let me do one thing. I will go to back to application. I know the problem. So basically, you need to assign this to group. Basically, if it's not assigned, yeah, you assigned it. Yeah, it got assigned. Then now you try to generate it again. So it generated. I say proceed and use this to uh, use this token. Okay, now send the request. I got a successful response, 200, okay, right? So if you see in header, there are, it's saying authorization, it sent this as a beer token in the authorization header, right? So that is how you can enable a dynamic client registration for your organization, right? Any question? Hello? Before I come to Q, is any question? So I think we have covered all the client management and the identity management. So let me start with quiz. Every I hope everybody is ready, right? If they are ready, like uh, I can go with next slide. You can use that client credential. In that case, it will not ask you for username and a password, basically. But the problem is that like you have to go uh, go on the backend, basically. Okay. See, Dhananjay, that is not available in this uh, developer version. It, that is available in like, uh, you can do some settings in the enterprise version Okta, where it will it can automatically assign the users Dhananjay. Okay, so this is just a developer version. We, it's not fully functional. You can use the client credentials. I will show you complete. Like you can register as a, like, uh, like you know, you can register as an authorization code because by default, this option doesn't come on the screen for client credentials. So you have to go here and you have to edit this and you can just enable the client credentials here. Okay, you can do like that and you can just say save. In this case, you don't have to provide the authorized URL. That's a difference. Okay, okay so let me start with quiz first. So I'll put one, nobody yeah. have, uh, any question. So let me
So first question, which is not correct, O or grant type? A is client credential, B is refresh token, C is basic authentication, D is authorization code. Which is not correct, a grant type, O or two grant type, client credential, refresh token, basic auth or authorization code. Okay, so the answer is C, basic auth. Basic auth is not a correct grant type. Let me check how many give the correct answer. So let me uh, spin the wheel for this three first question. So we, I, I just change like uh, uh, this way, like we are initially we are taking all nine names and then we are selecting three winners. But let we do this way. Like I got some feedback to do this way. So let me do. It's Kinera ready. So can you ping me your email ID quickly? You know. So, can you ping me email ID, please? Hello? got the first winner so like in here now you are not allowed to give a second answer because like you already won one okay so please give a chance to other what is full form of ddos dynamic denial of service distributed denial of service double denial of service disk denial of service a b c d So answer is B, distributed denial of service. Let me check how many give the correct answer. Vipul, Hirala and Ajay Santos. Vipul Nayak. Let me spin up for the second winner is Hirala Sa. Congratulations. Can you ping me your email ID quickly? I think Hirala, I have your email ID. So Just to let me check. Okay. So, okay, okay. So, I'm sorry. Like, I have to spin up it once again. Hilala, I'm sorry. Because it's Raghuram also. Yeah. It's not Ajay. We pull Raghuram and Hilala. We pull. Let me run one again. It's my mistake. Sorry, Iradan. I 
Bilalar only. Yeah, that's fine. So let me go with third question. So what is full form of SAML? Security application markup language, security assertion markup language, or service assertion markup language and service application markup language. The answer is B, a security assertion markup language. So let me show how many I gave the right answer. It's Raburam, Vipul Nayak, and Ajay Santos. Raburam, Vipul Nayak, and Ajay Santos. Okay. Right. So I have selected right people. Don't do mistake this time. Let me check. Raghuram, Vipul, and Ajay Santos. Raghuram was first. Let me put his name first. And Vipul Naik and Ajay Santos. Okay, so let me run the spin up again. So it's Vipul Nayak uh, is the second winner. Vipul, can you ping? you for your time like you know so yeah so i will send the email like email to everyone so any anything like So guys, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining today's session. Like, so I want like everybody to to get free because it's uh, uh, Saturday. So I will not take your time. Okay. So, thank you so much, Jitendra. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Thanks, Jitendra. Bye bye.